Hey, this is Mark Mori, aka the Casino Mark, at various places on the internet. It's 10:24 a.m. according to a computer clock on Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014, and this is my review of Episode 12 of Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Crystal. I believe it's called Queen Metallia. I forget the name of the um, episode at the moment, and Crunchyroll isn't listing it. But anyway. Uh, this episode, I suppose, if we were to compare it to uh, the equivalent in the original series, it would probably be episode 44, Usagi's Awakening, A Message from the Distant Past, which originally aired in Japan on February 13, 1993. That's what it seems most like. The Sailor Warriors discover the portal to a Dark Kingdom and are traveling down there when Kunside confronts them. Uh, I suppose that's it. So, okay, in this episode, remember in the last review I said episode 11 did not completely finish episode act 11 of the uh, manga? Okay. Episode 12 of Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Crystal is the rest of act 11 of the manga. Remember, Act 11 was like 90 pages long or something. So they finish it. Usagi kills a Dimian and kills herself. That's how it ends, and that's how the manga act ended. Okay. Um, so, what do I think about the episode? Well, overall, this is the first episode of Crystal that I'm really having problems with. You know how they've kept the Shitenu, the four generals of the Dark Kingdom around, even though the manga had killed them off? And only Toonside was around, like, at the end? Uh, but they kept them alive in Crystal. For what? We were all wondering. What, what's the big plan? Well, apparently the big plan is for the uh, Sailor Senshi to help them regain their memories again. And then, when you think everything's all going to be happy between them, Queen Metallia just shows up out of nowhere, shoots down lightning or whatever, causes a big crater, it just kills the four of them. Like two seconds, that's it. They're dead. That's what they kept them around for? Okay, I, I suppose... The point of that is war sucks, bad stuff happens, nothing you can do about it. Still, the, the Senshi are anguished over this, but I can't really, I can't really empathize with them because the manga gives vague hints that uh, Shitenu and Senshi used to be paired together. In Crystal, the only things that we've gotten... Back in episode 3, when Sailor Mars was introduced, Nephrite has this weird sense of familiarity with Rei. Like he knew her. She doesn't feel anything about him because she's unconscious at the time. And if there's any, if there are any more references after that, I forget. There, there's not really, there's no sense of bonding between them. Um, there, there, there's a moment of recognition between Minako, Sailor Venus, and Kunsite in this episode, shortly before the Shitenu were awakened. And their memories are restored. They, they can't. They, they, yeah. They, there's a moment of recognition there, but there's just almost nothing to go on. And then the Senshi are devastated. Oh, but then the Shitano appeared to them in their minds and tell them, "You can do it. You need to go and help Sailor Moon." So they're like, "Right," and they go off. So like. Two minutes or whatever, they're over the Shitano's death. So what was the point? <sighs> the, 
They got over that really fast. What else? Oh! We get a bit of backstory on Queen Beryl right before Usagi kills her. Kills her by destroying the necklace that she's wearing with her sword. Which I guess is how she was getting her power. So she killed... So she cracked her necklace and then Queen Beryl's dead. That's strange. I read a fan complaint that uh, in the manga Venus was the one that killed Beryl and they changed it in the show to be Usagi. I don't remember. I read the manga uh, obviously but I read that that issue uh, Act uh, 11 um, over two weeks ago. So I don't remember now. Um, I think it was Act 11 that Beryl was killed. Yeah. Act 12 of the manga is called Resurrection. And then Act 13 is Final Battle, I believe. Now, okay. Uh, Final Battle, Act 13 of the manga, the Dark Kingdom arc ends halfway through. And then the Black Moon arc starts with Chippeusa's arrival. What I have a feeling that they'll do is for Act 13 of the manga, which is called Resurrection Final Battle, or Final Battle Resurrection, it seems that they're going to be combining Act 12 of the manga with the first half of Act 13 of the manga to conclude the Dark Kingdom storyline. And then I think they're going to save Chibiusa's arrival for Act 14, for Episode 14 of Crystal. Um... Oh, right when Beryl's about to die, we get a brief flashback that she was pining after Endymion and watching him from a distance. So I guess that's our, we're supposed to feel bad for her thing, even though she led the humans in revolt against the moon. And this is before Metallia uh, took possession of her, I believe. She, she wasn't a good person, but I guess we're supposed to feel bad for her somehow. I don't know. Um, th this episode just... Okay, in, in the manga, obviously the Shatana weren't brought back, but they still all communicated with the Senshi and told them to go and help Usagi. So that part is from the manga. Originally, I think they confronted only Kunsai, or Kunsai confronted them, or whatever. And then I guess he dies. I don't remember, but anyway... But yeah, in Crystal, they bought all the Shutenu. They, they kept all the Shutenu around just so Metallia could pop out of nowhere like she could be in two places at once and just phew, lightning, crater, you're dead. Lame. And if she could do that, why did she not kill the Senshi? The Senshi posed a far greater threat to her than the Shutenu did. It doesn't make sense. Anyway. Jeez, I, I don't know what else I can say about this. Oh, uh, Usagi, she, he, she gets a message from her mother, Queen Serenity, who calls her kawaii, Usagi, like cute Asagi or something like that. That's nice, but she tells her to, like, be optimistic and stuff like that. And then when Usagi can't turn Endymion back to the side of good, she's like, oh, he, he's gone. Uh, and if, in fact, Beryl was really confusing, saying, she said in episode 11 that it was Endymion, but here she says Endymion's dead and that he's been revived and given the power of the Dark Kingdom. Well, whatever. So Usagi, after not being able to convince Endymion or you know Mamoru to come back to the side of good, you know, uh, combined to all of maybe a few minutes worth of talking to him, she's like, "Oh well, there's no hope. I'm gonna kill him and kill myself. I don't want to have to deal with this. We'll we'll come back together in the next life." 
seriously? That, that, that's an interesting way of interpreting being optimistic and stuff like that. Way to uh, honor your mom, Usagi. Anyway. Preview said, you know, resurrection, final battle, or final battle, resurrection, or whatever it's called. So, the Dark Kingdom arc ends in two weeks. Well, less than two weeks now, I guess. There, there's no countdown on Crunchyroll. We have no episode 13 slot, but um, it's coming, so I look forward to it. I mean, I'm not as upset about the way that they treat this Chitano as Aurora Peachy is, for example. If you happen to watch her reaction videos, go and watch them. But, uh, I guess I'm just, I don't have as much in emotional investment in male characters as I do in female characters. So I didn't mind as much, but it, I recognize that it was still lame. I wonder if Naoko specifically wanted it to happen this way. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to be rambling, I guess. So I'll end it right now. 10.36am uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.